What is actually inside a mechanical hard disk? And what are the purposes of the various components in there? Let's find out in this micro nugget. This is a slice of our CompTIA Storage Plus course here at CBT Nuggets. Now, if you're like me, the first thing that you think of when you think about the guts of a hard disk drive is the platter. Yeah, that's right. That rigid, very rigid, and unbelievably smooth surface where the data is actually going to be read from and written to. It has to be absolutely smooth. If the surface is not smooth, we get in the disk technology arena what we call noise, another word for interference. Get enough of this noise and interference and it can lead to what we would consider a hard disk drive crash. This rigid smooth platter is made of glass or an aluminum substrate and then what is extremely important it is is that it is covered with a magnetized surface. The magnetized surface, as we'll see, is how we're actually going to read and write from the particular platter. Now, what's interesting is we need to maximize capacity. We need to squeeze as much storage as humanly possible out of this mechanical hard disk drive. So both the top and the bottom of the platter is utilized for reading and writing information. In fact, we have many platters in hard disk drives these days. So you can imagine three platters inside the casing and we have a read right head as we'll see reading this surface, that surface, this surface, that surface, this surface, that surface, one, two, three, four, five, six different surfaces for reading and writing information to squeeze more capacity out of the hard disk drive. So you have this single or more commonly multiple platters inside what we officially term is the head disk assembly. This, uh, this is the enclosure for these particular platters. Remember, top and bottom of the platters are utilized and the cumulative effect, all of the tops and the bottoms of these platters that we can read and write to is the cumulative storage that we measure the hard disk drive capacity in. As you know, it's a megabyte amount, a gigabyte amount, or a terabyte amount. There is actually larger than a terabyte, and that's the Mike Tyson byte. Okay, bad boxing joke, sorry. In fact, a really old boxing joke. Some of you may not even know who Mike Tyson is anymore, I suppose. But anyways, I'm dating myself. Notice that these platters are going to spin at a very high rate of speed. When you have multiple platters, they're all going to spin at the same time and at the same velocity. Now, what in the world is it that actually spins those platters? Well, we call it the spindle. Yeah, it's this axle right in the center of the platters. Now, obviously, it needs to be powered by a motor, and we call this the drive motor. The faster these platters can spin, the more efficiently we can read and write information from the platters. So this is a measure of the speed of a drive, one of the metrics that we can utilize. It's the rotations per minute of this platter system that's spun by the spindle. Common speeds that you will see are 5400, 7200, 10,000, we're even starting to see rotations per minute of 15,000 now with modern mechanical hard disk technologies. Now, another key mechanical component is called the actuator arm assembly. It's this stuff right here. Notice there are read-write heads on the end of the actuator arm assembly, and this arm assembly is going to be swinging those read-write heads into various extremely, incredibly precise positions over the platter in order to read and write information. Now, as we said, at the end of that actuator arm assembly, we have the actual read-write heads. This is really gets just totally amazing. Let's see, say this is our platter. We are looking at it. You know, we are here's the hard drive itself. Inside, we have the platter. 
the read right head is hovering just above the platter. When I say just above, that measurement is commonly referred to in hard disk drive engineering technology as the flying height. So the height above the platter of the read right head is our flying height. Now, think this is close to the platter. Think the platter needs to be smooth. It sure does. What is the average flying height of the read right head above the platter? How about the diameter of a human hair? That's right. It is ridiculously, unbelievably close to the top of that platter. And remember, we have a read right head on the bottom of the platter as well. And it is having a flying height that is just a hair, literally just a hair above the surface of the platter. Now, what if these read right heads were to go to a wrong location in the disk surface to read or write? Well, this is what we call disk corruption. And obviously it's a bad thing. What if the read right head were actually to touch the surface of the platter? In hard drive engineering speak, this is called, let me write this one down, this is an important one, this is called a head crash. So if the read right head were actually to touch the platter, this is a head crash, and obviously this is extremely disastrous for the hard disk drive, typically resulting in a loss of data on that particular platter. What is the read right head actually doing? Well, remember, the surface of the platter is magnetized. The read right head is either reading the magnetic zeros and ones settings on the surface of the platter, or it is writing the ones and zeros magnetic settings on the surface of the platter. This is one of the reasons why the hard disk drive can basically be written to an unlimited number of times. The read right head is either setting the ones and zeros magnetically or reading the ones and zeros magnetically on the disk platter. So we know the read right head is going to be moving across the surface of the disk that is spinning very precisely. And there's an internal addressing that is used in the disk drive for it to find particular locations. Specifically, we have these tracks, they are called that are moving around the disk. And then what you have is particular locations on this track, for instance, right here, and this is called a sector. A sector is the smallest unit that we have on the disk drive surface, and it is 512 bytes in size. So we have these many tracks, we have these many sectors. Now, one of the interesting thing things that you see when you conceptualize this is that this area right here is smaller than this area right there. Yeah, so that sector area is smaller compared to this sector area. In other words, we should be able to get a lot more sectors on the outside track than in an inside track. This is indeed the case and disk drive technology makers have indeed been able to squeeze more sectors in the outside tracks than the inside. And this is called zoned data recording or ZDR. So this technology allows disk drive makers to squeeze more and more capacity, yeah, raw capacity out of the surface of the disk. Now the internal drive addressing is called CHS addressing. This stands for cylinder head sector. You see the cylinder reference, the numer numerical cylinder reference tells us what track we are on. The head tells us which surface we're on. Because remember, we could have three platters, for instance. We need to know, are we here, are we here, here, or here, here, or here. There's six possible surfaces in this particular arrangement. And then the S, of course, stands for where on the track we are. This is our reference to a sector. So CHS addressing is used internally on the disk structure in order to get that particular read write head to a specific 
location. Very interesting now, if we have a CHS capacity of 800 tracks, 8 heads, and 32 sectors per track, then we have a disk capacity of 104,857,600 bytes. So the CH raw numbers can actually lead to the maximum capacity of that particular disk. Now, this internal addressing on the disk structure is what we get when we have what we call a factory format. Sure, when the disk is factory formatted, it is indeed this addressing structure that is put in place. Oftentimes, you'll hear engineers refer to this as a low-level format of the disk. This is not what we do when we are in an operating system and we format the drive. No, that is a logical type formatting that we are performing as opposed to this factory format where the internal addressing is decided. Now, all this is pretty darn complicated, right? Very, very impressive technology, and it seems to me all of this would need a computer in order to run. I mean, really, there needs to be like a little mini computer controlling all of this, and there is. That's exactly what the disk controller is doing. This is a printed circuit board. It has its own processor. It has its own memory. It has its own firmware. And this disk controller is going to control things like the power that goes to the drive motor. It'll control the speed of the spinning platters. It'll control the movement of that actuator arm. And then it does something that is extremely important. It will store the mapping of that internal addressing to a logical type of addressing that the operating system can understand. This is called LBA, logical block addressing. You see, there could be so many different mappings and all kinds of things going on in the actual disk itself, the operating system could get extremely confused from one disk to the other. So logical block addressing hides the complexities of the internal addressing structure of the disk from the operating system. So the drive controller is going to be responsible for presenting to the operating system the simple logical block addressing. And this disk controller will then be responsible for mapping this to the actual addressing structure that is used by the drive. Now, as you might guess, we get into even more detail in our CompTIA Storage Plus here on those components inside the mechanical hard disk, but I sure hope you enjoyed this micro nugget, again, a small slice of our actual content from Storage Plus here at CBT Nuggets. I sure hope this micro nugget was informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.